Azeroth, a history, is recorded in Treaty 1 territory, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Welcome to Azeroth A History, a look into the history of Azeroth and how it pertains to World Warcraft today. I'm your co-host, Bam Bam Anderson. And I'm your co-host, Winstar, KKA Senpai. Uh, so this episode I put together a little bit differently. Um, instead of doing all the trivia at the end, I have a bunch of it like with the things that we're talking about. So it's a little oh, bit... Oh, nice. It's a little yeah, bit okay. weird. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Loa of Azeroth, uh, which is the name given by the trolls to the beings that they worship. So, cool. They're kind of akin to the Night Elf Wild Gods, except that they're, like, troll-based, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so, it, it actually also includes some of the Wild Gods, uh, but also Gahoon was considered a Loa, um, as well as spirits like Wisps. Okay. For whatever reason, I don't know why. I, I've never understood why that is, and I've never found anything to help me understand that one. Um, the Zandalari trolls also believe that the powerful and enlightened among them become Loa when they die. Yeah, okay, kind of like heroes in uh, in Greece. Do they? Is that was that a thing? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Cert like um, if you were like the founder of a town, hero worship would be started after your death like yeah once a year on like, the day you died or or some sort of special day they would have like a festival for it okay that's, yeah, there there were that... like hundreds hundreds of just mortal people like normal people that just started get got in worshipped after their death because they like did something excite exciting or did something good or or even if they were out bad people there would be like hero worship to like hope that their spirit wouldn't negatively affect the town or whatever that's exciting. Uh, yay yeah. for some real world um, history that we're learning. Because we actually get a little bit more. Because um, all of the Loa as a whole kind of pull from Haitian voodoo Loa. And okay. some Louisiana uh, voodoo as well. Um, and Loa itself, like in terms of uh, Haitian and Louisiana voodoo, uh, comes from the French for les lois or the laws. So I don't know how that part would tie into the Greek teachings and stuff, but that's interesting. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm not talking about all of the Loa today because that list is very long. Um, but we're going to touch upon some of the ones that we met through Battle for Azeroth, as well as a couple other ones that come from earlier in the WoW timeline. Um, cool. Cool. So, for the trolls of Azeroth, uh, they would pray to their Loa of choice in regards to blessings, um, asking for, like, strength, that kind of thing. Uh, I believe they could also be used to channel curses as well, but it seemed like only certain Loa were turned to for that. Okay. Um, and we actually see in a cinematic a troll praying to Bonsamdi and asking him, do not take me yet. I don't remember cool. if I've I don't remember if I've sent you that uh, cinematic. I definitely didn't for today, but I really should because uh, it's very like Resident Evil in its like an all of its cinematicness. I love it. It's great. <laughs> uh, there's also some discrepancy in regards to some of the knowledge of Loa, uh, which we'll get into a little bit as well. Um, but it seems to be where many trolls actually get their power and their magic in a lot of cases is from their Loa. Okay. Um, one very important thing about Loa also, they're not entirely immortal. Um, they can be killed, and they eventually reincarnate in some capacity, as we see throughout some of our adventures. Okay. Um, and so we're going to start this with Razan, who is the, he's the pretty heavy presence in our last episode, uh, being the Loa of Kings and Queens. Mm -hmm. Um He's a giant devil sir, which is the name for Tyrannosaurus Rex on Azeroth. Um, okay. And people would call on him for both uh, strength as well as leadership. Um, 
I don't fully know how much King Rastakhan prayed to Razan prior to Razan helping us save the king from Bwadsapti, but because part of Razan's power may include giving life to his faithful followers, um, it's believed that he extended the life of Rastakhan. Okay. And that was, like, before we actually saved the, the king. So, yeah. Um, Rastakhan's daughter, though, Talanji, revered uh, Razan, and we see that when we're escaping from Stormwind, she calls on Razan to propel the ship forward. Um, there's also a point where Rokan, the leader of the Darkspear, uh, mentions not knowing Razan, but owes him thanks for saving them as they moved through the city and down to the docks. Okay. So not all trolls know about all Loa. That makes sense. I'm, I'm assuming some are probably, like, localized. Well, and there's some that are also, uh, like, worshipped throughout different tribes, too. Uh, well, I'll get into a couple uh, a little bit later, but Razan doesn't seem to be one of them. I don't know why. Okay. Um, there's also a mess at the Temple of Razan. Zul's followers infiltrated the temple and sort of kind of held Razan hostage and started draining his power. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Following this is when we move against Zul and his followers, um, following him into a trap that would ultimately lead to Razan's death and therefore resurrection as an undead husk. Uh, the lowest life essence was also used to revive the first Zadalari king in the later dungeon that we go into. Um... Another note about Razan's death, many of his followers ended up losing their power, but some of them were still able to keep their abilities. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's a little weird, so, but neat. So, like, most of them, their power was connected to his life force, but for some of them it wasn't? I think so, yeah. That's that's kind of the sense that I'm getting from a lot of it. Yeah, okay. Interesting. It's, it's a little weird how it fits all together, but yeah. Um... Next, I'm going to talk about Buen Samdi, since he came up. Uh, he pulls very heavily from Baron Samdi, uh, as the, they're, they're both the low of death. Um, but they're not the only ones in either following, which I think is very important to point out as well. Um, I believe Buen Samdi is known to most trolls, because the, the other troll that I was talking to that's praying to Buen Samdi, he's, he's a dark spear. Um, we've seen Buen Samdi in the past with Dark Spear stuff that we're not going to get into today. Um, or at least not a lot. But it, it seems like Buen Samdi is pretty well known among most of the tribes. Um, our first encounter with him is during... Oh, I guess I did go into this. Our first encounter with him is during Wrath of the Lich King. And it has a lot to do with Vol'jin, the previous leader of the Dark Spear. Um, but Vol'jin is getting his own no oh, next... His own episode. Next episode. Next month. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, he also serves as our spirit healer while on Zandalar and will comment on your death, uh, which changes depending on your class. <laughs> He's such an ass. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, sometimes he's just like standing there and fishing, and like, I don't know. I I'm very amused by Blood Sappy. I like him a lot. Um. But yeah, we've known about him for a while. The next time we see him, depending on the order that you actually quest in, is when Rastakhan is close to death. Um, we don't really get a good idea of exactly who he is at this point. Um, aside from that, Razan doesn't really think much of him. Uh, I mentioned in our last episode that Razan actually threatened Bonsamdi, and I'll just read out the exchange because it's so great. Uh, so after Razan yells for Bon Samdi appear to appear, he shows up and says, um, You got a bellow that would wake the dead. What you want, man? Razan says, uh, You have taken what is mine. Release him. Bon Samdi says, Long time. You'll be keeping this one from me. Long, long time. I'll be denied no further. Uh, Razan says, Know your place, low of graves, or I will put you in one. Oh, snap a do. <laughs> And Buen Samdi says, comes a time when we all gotta die, even kings. But I be feeling generous. Take your little friend, I'll be seeing you again in good time. <laughs> <laughs> so it also kind of leads, lends credence to the, the idea that Razad has kind of kept Rastakhan alive longer than maybe he's supposed to? That, no, that makes sense. That 
comment certainly alludes to that kind of idea. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just love that. Like, uh, <laughs> know your place, or I'm gonna put you in a grave. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, later on, when we're dealing with the blood trolls in the swamps of Nazmir, we're brought to the Necropolis, which is Buonsabi's temple. And Buonsabi agrees to pledge his power uh, to the fight against Gahoon and the blood trolls. Um, but now we owe him one million souls. Oh, snap. Yeah, so we, we, we still owe him quite a bit. I don't think I've paid a lot of that back. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the blood trolls start attack when, while we're finalizing the contract with him, too. So he's pretty pissed off because, like, what gall do they have to attack him at his own temple? Right? You gotta show up at my house and start shit with me? Exactly, right? It's like, excuse me? <laughs> uh, uh, so we go with Talanji to visit another Loa. So we're going to get to him next because Blood Savvy's going to come back again and like a few times actually. Um, Torga was a giant lo turtle Loa. Uh, many Tortolan people would actually make pil pilgrimages to hear the stories from the great and wise turtle. Um, and we come upon them as they discover that the Loa has been killed, his flesh consumed, his blood used to raise undead. Oh, and... wow. Right? Uh, and then they're also, the blood trolls are also using him to summon a herald of Gahoon, which is oh really God. terrible. Oh, <laughs> right? Oh, so terrible. Uh, so Talanji wishes to speak to Torga, uh, and she has a way. We call Bonsamdi again to help us, and Bonsamdi. we, yeah, and we ask him to call on the spirit of the turtle, and he's like, "Well, no, first I want a soul in exchange, uh, specifically the soul of another Loa." Uh, oh shit! So Talanji denies this request, uh, and he agrees to using the souls of the blood trolls who have consumed parts of Torga. Uh, so we don't fully get Torga's help since he's not really strong enough, uh, but after stopping the blood trolls and, uh, like, after stopping their plans with him, mostly, he's actually reborn as a tiny little turtle, and that one of the Tortolans take care of. Yeah. Cute. And he's so cute, he's so little, and he, he sits on the other Tortolan's head, and it's, <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, oh my god, I just saw a picture on, on the Facebook that was like this super ancient turtle with like his three week old son on his head and it was so adorable. So that's what that makes me think of. Now, now I just got to thinking about Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, that's, a, that's always a good thing. So that's not the end of the adventure with Bonsabdi himself. Uh, there's another thing that we have to skip, um, but we haven't exactly talked about what he and Rastakhan had gotten up to in the Battle of uh, in the Battle of Dazarlor. Or sorry, we had skipped it. This is us going into it. <laughs> Heck yeah, let's get into it. Uh, part of the alliance prep for this war uh, included befriending a gorilla named Grong, and using gnomish technology to make him bigger and stronger. It like. Basically, we use his intelligence, because he's a very, very, very smart gorilla. Uh, we use his intelligence and turn that into um, just size and strength, basically. And it works. <laughs> and then we send him off into the city as we move up from the docks. So the horde fights him first, and they kill him. Which is sad. And then, what, what, <laughs> and then when somebody does something not so chill. And he raises him as an undead revenant. Well, you know, sometimes you're just not ready for people to go. <laughs> it's true. But then he sends him against like, us, uh, so it's uh, like... When they make Terra into a vampire on True Blood. Oh, yeah. Oh. Man, it's been a long time since I watched that show. I should watch that again. Uh, yeah, so so he sends the uh, now undead Grong against us, and super fucking tragic, super not chill, super not cool of one zombie. 
I mean, sometimes when you're the god of dead things, you do some not chill stuff with the dead things. I feel like that just goes hand in hand. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, sure. I don't have to be happy about it. I laugh to hide my pain. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are absolutely entitled to your rage. <laughs> Um, so it's about here that uh, Rastakhan calls on Buon Samdi, basically saying, you promised me power, let's do this. Uh, and then so the Alliance finally encounters King Rastakhan, in which he's also threatened to cut ties, like, he better cut ties with the Horde and just, like, lay down arms, um, which obviously doesn't happen. Uh, and then Buon Samdi is, also helps him in this fight, and when he realizes that King Rastakhan is, like, screwed, he's like, yep, bye! Peace. Bye. This was fun. I'm out. You can do this. Like, I'm out now. Yep. So again, not chill. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then this is where we see the exchange between Rasagon and Talanji as he takes his dying breath. Yeah. We, Heartbreaking. Um, yeah. We see the king's hands have, like, deteriorated. Um, his rings actually no longer fit on his fingers. He's literally, like, shriveling up. Oh, he, wow. Yeah, and he holds his daughter's hand, and the pack transfers to her. And she's, like, pissed. She doesn't really understand what's going on. It also doesn't have a lot of time to process anything, and what's happening is just kind of sitting on the throne, and she glares at him and says, uh, what have you done to me? And he's just like, oh, Dad didn't tell you, um... We'll, we'll talk about it later. You kind of got more important things to deal with right now. <laughs> and then just kind of points her in the direction of the Alliance. Which is, I mean, it's fitting. Alright. Um, I want to get this one out of the way because this is a spider loa. And I know how uncomfortable some people can be with spiders. Because I used to be one of those people. Oopsie! Gotta get over it! It's okay, it's a short part. Um, so we've mentioned Shadra before. Um, she has worshippers all over Azeroth in many different tribes, actually. Um, she's She seems to be very big in the Amani tribe. And there's even a small, like, within Zul'Garub, there's, I, I, don't know if it's a, I don't know if I can call it a temple or a shrine to her. Um, but the, like, that's actually a part of Zul'Garub. So, yeah, quite well known among most trolls. Um, we come across her in the shrine of Shadra and Zul'dazar, kind of in the outskirts of the city, where Zul's followers are moving against her, and this is where Yasma ends up killing her and absorbing her power, telling her to die forever, which I don't know, I don't think that's accurate, but maybe it is because of how she stole the lowest power, I don't really know. That's some shit. Yeah, and so as she's able to like summon spiders as part of her boss fight, and I I, I hate that entire fight. Eek. It's annoying. Oh my god, gross. Yeah, if this was me, uh, like nine or ten years ago, I would not like that fight at all. Uh, now I just hate it because the spiders are annoying. But at least I'm not scared. <laughs> so, so yay. <laughs> not to make fun of anybody who is scared. It's spiders are creepy. Uh, now let's take a break, and we're going to check the auction house. Oh, snap. Auction house. If you like what we do, consider donating through our Patreon at patreon.com slash senpai and bam bam. And remember, senpai has two Ps. If you're unable to do that, we would also appreciate a review on Apple Podcast, Podchaser, or any other podcast service that you use. It helps us open up to a wider audience. You can also share this with your friends, your family, your guildies, your food delivery driver, your your mailman, you know, FedEx guy, all those people that you're seeing on the regs these days. Yeah, we are getting a lot of deliveries these days, eh? Although I never see my mailman. I mean, that's true. They just kind of leave it at the door and I grab it. Which yeah, I'm not mad about because I spend most my time in my domicile nude and now I don't need to get dressed to get food. There you go. So, that bonus. Just <laughs> wait, look through the peephole till they leave and open the door, no big deal. There you go. 
<laughs> Getting to know things during, during, during uh, pandemic time. All right. Uh, catch our Machinima with Bam Bam series, which is available to patrons a week early and goes up weekly on Tuesdays. If you have any suggestions for that, we will take them on Discord or by email or however else you talk to us. I'm on Twitter, so there's one way. Right. You can uh, send us a DM or leave a comment on our Instagram. I post about all of the Machinima episodes when they go up. Yep. Also, if you want to get in touch with us over on Discord, there will be a link in the show notes on the website to join that. It's open to everyone with a patron-only section. Uh, also, if you want to come hang out with Senpai on stream, uh, come watch me fail or win at stuff. Uh, I stream mostly raids right now on Twitch, as well as a few other things here and there. Um, always down to chat WoW or really almost anything else, and yeah. That that's all tied into the Discord too, so come have fun. Come hang out in socially distanced times where we can just hang out from home. It's great. Woo! <laughs> the life of an introvert, eh? Oh right. Yeah, you've been you've been training for this. You're you're all set. <laughs> it's like I've been training thirty years for this. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the Loa. Um, there are two other Loa attacked uh, kind of in the takeover by Zul. The first is Gonk. Who oh, I misspelled in my notes for some reason. He's a raptor uh, known as the Lord of the Pack, Master of the Hunt, and Loa of Shapes. Uh, the Zandalari druids serve him, and that's likely where they get their ability to shapeshift. Um, he also taught... He also, he's also the one who first taught the Dark Spear how to contact the Loa in different ways and therefore, you know, become druids and stuff. All kinds of info coming from this guy. I like Gonk. Um, I, mean, I will his s- name, though. <laughs> there- Tally Essen and Evatel, Tally put out a video about all the things you hate about Zadalar, and one of them was the fact that uh, Gonk's name sucks. <laughs> right? It really does. <laughs> it's not a great name. Jarvis? Makes me think of Gunk. (laughs) I mean, yeah. Uh, But he's voiced by Dave Fenoy, um, who's just awesome. Uh, And one of his his quotes when he's angry is, If you plan to run, just remember, I can open doors. (laughs) (laughs) What? In reference to Jurassic Park. (laughs) Oh, okay. That's okay. That makes sense. I was like, the fuck? Because the little, like, velociraptors, they open the doors. No, yeah, I get it now. And he's a raptor, and it's great. I forgot that he was a raptor. That wasn't present. You got you got so distracted. You got so distracted by his name being Gunk. Exactly. Absolutely. I was like, no, no, no. The fact that he's a dinosaur is meaningless. His name is ridiculous. (laughs) Oh my god, it's great. (laughs) Um, So we first meet him by helping one of his followers, Wardruid Loti, uh, as well as her husband, Hexlord Rahl. Uh, And we help them against Zul's followers, who have kind of like infiltrated their, their temple where they Uh, specifically pray to the different Loa. Uh, When we're done helping clear the temple, we then get to choose between Gonk and another Loa, Paku. Uh, Paku? Paku. Uh, So Paku is the other Loa that resides close to the city. Um, She also helps us against Zul's followers. Uh, Her her follower is Hexlord Rahl. Um, who was that? Like that was kind of our in with the Loa. Uh, she is a large pterodax, which is basically the Warcraft name for pterodactyl. Yeah, okay. Um, the followers of both Gonk and Paku don't usually get along, so both of them helping out against a shared enemy says a lot. Um, the only real exclusion to that rule seems to be Loti and Rahl, at least that we get to see, since one, they're married. Um, but they also seem to bicker a lot between them, uh, to the point, 
<laughs> My favorite part about this is there's one world quest where Loti asks us to grab supplies from a spooked caravan dinosaur. And when we're done, Rawls like, I would have just hexed it and been o- and gotten it over with. But my wife gets mad at me for that. <laughs> uh. I love them so much. They're so cute. <laughs> um, all right. Back up in Nazbir again. There's a lot of frogs around, obviously, because swamps. Uh, but also because what better fl- place for a giant frog to live? Oh, heck yeah, I'm a... I was just saying, live the swampy best. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Kragwa the Huge very much lives up to his name. Um, he dwarfs Zandalari trolls by a lot. Uh, he, he's, he's really, really big. Uh, <laughs> to give you an idea, I think blood elves are about 5'6". Like, I think they're about my height. And yeah. I, I come up to the waist on my blood elf to a Zandalari troll. So, and then he dwarfs them. So, he, he big. Oh, wow. He a big yep. boy. <laughs> uh, he demands Like plenty- the giant turtle hmm. from A Neverending Story. Uh, maybe not quite that big. Actually, I don't quite remember how big that turtle is. I- it's not like, like in Avatar, it's not like the lion turtles that have like the cities on their backs or anything like that. Though, no, she just had like some trees growing on her, and not like huge ones. Okay, not no, not quite that big. He demands plenty of food though, and offerings from his followers, and so he's very physically strong as well. Uh, he can leap long distances, and he basically uses his weight to throw around to help us. Um, part of him helping us is we actually hop on his back and jump around onto blood trolls and whip them with his tongue. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's delightful and awesome. That sounds hilarious. Yeah. Uh, he also helps us uh, fight back Zul's followers as well. Uh, he's not a huge fan of blood trolls, as you may have guessed. Um, first, they planned to sacrifice him to Gahoon. So, not a great start for them. Um, they also drained his children. And then... They killed all of his wor- worshippers in Nazmir. Oh my goodness. And then some oh, of... Fucking bloodbath. Right? And then they also may have corrupted some of the tadpoles that were his, um, in- <gasps> instead of actually draining them, and they turn into krogs, which are like... I s- they're like the pug dog of, of like, creatures, I think, because they're, they're kind of really adorable, but in a really ugly way. And I have two bounts that are crocs, and they're adorable. Oh my god. That's <laughs> they have... kind of hilarious. <laughs> Their faces are so tiny. <laughs> Anyways, alright. Um, there's another set of creatures in Nazmir that we do have to talk about, too. Uh, bats. Specifically, the Batloa Hyreek. Um, he's voiced by D. Bradley Baker, the same guy who did Appa in Avatar, The Last Airbender, and he does a lot of creature voices. Nice. Which, which is just delightful. Um, Absolutely. Our, our first actual look at Hyreek in game comes back in Cataclysm. We are guided by the spirit of Hyreek to actually spy on some of the trolls south of, south of Zul'Garub, um, leading up to the new version of that whole summoning of Hakar, you know, bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, when we get into the swamps, though, we're sifting around, and there's a lot of blood trolls around his home. Blood trolls were successful in corrupting him for use for Gahoon. Uh, and then we end up having to kill him. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, we also do this before we help Wansamdi and find out about Torga, so I don't understand why like, we can't just be like, Hey, we killed Loa like 20 minutes ago, can we just use that one? You're right. There you go. Fresh soul. Like, he, he dead, but he not, like, he only mostly dead. We only just killed him. <laughs> Use his soul. Right? He's warm. His soul must still be in the atmosphere. Probably. Uh, uh, I don't know. There, 
I feel like we're probably going to learn a little bit more about that possible, so, like, where souls go with the Shadowlands. We know they go to the Shadowlands. We don't know exactly what the process of everything is, so. Yeah. That'll be interesting. We, we can't talk about the Shadowlands yet, though. But I know some stuff. Yet. I know some stuff, but I, I can't give it as, as spoilers. Um, so the last portion of Zadalar is uh, the Deserts of Old Dune. Uh, there's a few Loa here, and the first one we're going to talk about is the Snake Loa, Sethralis. Um, which, a lot of people keep saying it wrong. It's Sethralis. It's Sethralis. Get it right. <laughs> yeah, Hermione. <laughs> Yeah. Um, she is worshipped not only by the trolls, but also the Sethrak, who are snake people. Sweet. Um, the only real encounter that we actually have with her is her avatar, uh, and through kind of some stories. So we have to get into a little bit more history here. Um, back during the Akir and Troll Wars that we talked about last time, Vuldun was not a desert, it was a jungle. Um, at this point, the seals to hold Gahoon imprisoned in place um, were still there. They were still uh, intact. Uh, one was held at Atul Aman in the jungle of Voldun. And that's where Mithrax was sent to destroy the seal. So the Loa ended up taking down Mithrax at this point, uh, at which it, t- it was a pretty great cost. Um, first, the seal did end up getting destroyed. So we succeeded in that part. And then to actually fully defeat him, Sethralis had to sacrifice herself. So she's kind of mostly dead at this point. She's dead. Oh, damn. Shouldn't say mostly. She's dead. Uh, Her followers brought her remains to the temple and awaited her rebirth, uh, which still hasn't happened 16,000 years later. Oh, wow. Uh, Three leaders of the Sethrak had worked together and sealed... Mithrax into the temple where he was killed in order to to prevent him from being raised again. Um, And by the time we get to Xanalar, only one of them had died. So Sethrak lived very long lives. (laughs) Oh, wow. That's Um, impressive. mm Mm-hmm. Which I don't really know how, either. Like, that's... I have many questions about Sethrak. So one of the Sethrak leaders had died. Uh, the other one had betrayed really everybody and everything. By the time we get there, the Sethrak are divided into two factions. The Faithless uh, following Korthek and the Devoted colo- following Kor- Vorik. Um, sorry, Vorik. Vorik. Um, the Faithless worked with one of Zul's followers to unlock the pyramid and raise Mithrax, which, of course, we know happened. Because, you know, Eek. why not? Huh? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you gotta raise them. <sighs> for reasons. Stupid Zul. Everything's Zul's fault. Um, there's also a good amount of concern that Sethralis had has not been reborn at this point. Uh, She does have her avatar, which is being subdued by some of the Faithless cultists, Um, and so... But we still don't know why she hasn't been reborn. Um, And acting through her avatar, she does help us in a few ways as time goes on. Which is pretty cool. Good for helping out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another one of the lowest still living in Voldoon is Akunda, the Thunder Lizard. Um, he is voiced by Christopher Judge, who I know best is from Stargate SG-1. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself as, as a nerd. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? 90s, you? 90s a TV, nerd? man. 90s TV. He's, oh, he's done man. a lot more, he's done a lot more voice work in the most recent years, but like, um, I still know him as, as, um, from Stargate, so... Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, He is the Loa of Storms and New Beginnings, uh, and he also helps his followers in sacred ritual to remove memories that cause them pain. Okay. I really like Akunda. Like, I really do. Just like a therapy boy. (laughs) Pretty much. Um, When we meet him as Horde players, uh, he's being held prisoner after being poisoned by one of his followers. Oh, man. 
Going by the name Akunda the Exalted, a Zandalari troll betrayed the Loa by poisoning a nearby spring. Um, and then started draining Akunda of his powers. Because apparently that's all we do in this fucking game, is just you drain everything of everything. Ugh. Oh yes, give me all the power, I will suck you dry! Giggity? Hi yeah. Jarvis! Okay, I'm gonna have a cat on me for the next portion of this recording. Cool. Um, so he, uh, and then he also wiped out the memories of any who would oppose him, and then forced everybody to change their names to Akunda the whatever. So, um, I can't remember what the choices that we got were, but I, I can't remember what I chose, but I, I, at one point I changed my name for about five minutes to Akunda the something. Oh, wow. Which, like, That's I mean... power trip. Right? So, when all goes well, the memories that are removed are kept in the Valley of Sorrows, and they're kept stored by the power of Akunda. But with him having been trained, things are going a little awry. So, he's able to kind of reach out to us mentally and send us there to find out what happened. And then, so we expose Akunda the Exalted. And uh, we, we kill him, and everything kind of goes back to normal. Akuna returns the memories of those who had been wiped by the traitor, and all is mostly well. Um, Akuna also helps during the final attack by Zul and his followers by keeping some of the Sethrak, who are also trying to invade during all the chaos um, as well. So, yay Akuna. Woo! Akuna Machada, am I right? Dude, that's actually so fitting. <laughs> I'm somewhat sad that I didn't come up with that, but... You're welcome for being so awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> uh, so, that all happens in the southern portion of Voldoon. Uh, up on the northern coast lies a temple to another loa. Uh, Woohoo! Kimball the Tiger Loa is worshipped not only by Zandalari, but also a number of other tribes, as well as some Tortolans. Um, I'm... And, I mean, as well as some Southern Americans who like tigers. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, we're not going there again. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me about the tiger, Lola. <laughs> so, um, so he's actually... There, there's also a tribe down in... Um, Florida? No, not Florida. In the south, in the there's a desert called Teneris, uh, where the Faraki tribe lives, and they also worship him. So nice. And they're technically part of the Gurubashi Empire. In yeah, I I don't think they officially are now, but they were like back in the day. Uh, so yeah. So he's also vo voiced by Dave Fenoy, because of course Dave Fenoy. He's just got such what a great mean? voice. Yeah, if you got it, flop on it. Exactly. Um, so Kimball's temple has been attacked multiple times over the centuries by Naga. Um, by the time we make our way there, the Naga are once again attacking, looking for a ring that Kimball had taken as a trophy from the previous Naga leader who had, um, who had attacked. Uh, so the previous Naga leader had... what They, they slew all of his followers... And then cursed those souls to be tormented in the afterlife for eternity. So he stole the ring as like, okay, fine, this is my fuck you as I get the ring. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're tasked with venturing into a portion of the Shadowlands to break the curse set upon his followers. Uh, and afterwards, Kimball is free to take on new followers. And starts protecting uh, the Tortaka tribe from the Naga. And accepts them in, so... Nice. So, so yay more turtles and then he also helps Paku and Gonk against Mithrax during Zul's raid on Azar Lore um, and then going back to uh, uh, kind of the main city after King Rastakhan is killed uh, by the Alliance Forces after King Rastakhan is killed by the Alliance Forces there we go there's that word English is hard um Talanji was not queen yet, and she couldn't actually become queen yet, uh, just either. There is... They have traditional rights of kings and queens. Um, 
and we are asked to join her. So we do. We make our way to the Zanchul Temple, which is um, the temple that honors all the Loa. Uh, and we accompany her through Zanchul. And we have to deal with some rioters. So we subdue some rioters, we evacuate some innocents, and then some of the ringleaders who have already killed people, we end up killing them. Boom, boom. Yeah. Uh, basically, every like everything that's going on there, like they don't think that the Zandalari should join the Horde, which, I mean, with Sylvanas in charge, I kind of totally agree with them, but also <laughs> join the Horde. <laughs> join us. <laughs> yes. Uh, the very last step of these rites is to speak to the Loa and receive their blessings. Um, not all of them, thankfully, but we do speak to Kragwa, Gonk, Paku, and lastly, Buan Samdi. Um, and he's the only one that gives us any trouble. <laughs> uh, no surprises. Our good old friend Buan Samdi. First of all, Talaji's not happy, to say the least, when Buan Samdi is... That, uh, first of all, that he's there. Uh, second of all, he stands in the placement for Razan. <laughs> so she's like, this isn't cool. That's not cool. Um, and then he reminds her of her father's bargain and offers to let her free of that bargain on one condition. She needs to bring him the head of the Horde's war chief, Sylvanas Windrunner. Oh, shit. This... Now that's a task and a half. Right. This doesn't happen, though. At least not no yet. Who knows? No, she she actually decides not to. Her honor uh, takes precedence over her freedom from from Bron Samdi. So, like, nah, you know what? The honor of the Zandalari is more important. I'm like, you know what? Good for you. Yas, queen. <laughs> so, Bron Samdi is amused by all this, and he still grants her his blessing to become queen. And so, Queen Talanji pledges the Zandalari officially to the Horde. And then there's an interesting conversation with Sylvanas. Um, she she basically reminds the war chief that the queen kneels to no one and they stand together as equals. And I right, really love that. Because I'm the lady doesn't mean I'm inferior, bitch. Exactly. I mean, Sylvanas is also a lady, so yeah. Um, there is one more Loa I wanted to mention on Zadalar. Uh, because mostly because he has no specific home, but I kind of adore him. Um, he's a sword lo Loa, which is like it's like the it, it's like the Velociraptor but smaller. Okay. Yeah. So they they don't grow above like maybe two or three feet. Um, okay, I'm gonna go through his titles here first because this is amazing. The Lord of Thieves, patron of scavengers, okay. the god of garbage. Master of Minions, the Keeper of Secrets, Ruler of Rubbish, and Master of All Things Discarded and Unwanted. Oh, shit. <laughs> His name is Jani, uh, and he, he... I wanted to bring it up because, one, swords are adorable and he's adorable, and two, where we find him and where we actually interact with him are little trash piles around Zandalar. It's kind oh. of amazing. Just, just in pile. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And like, oh, it's so great. And then three. There's a quest line where we we deal with this with this one uh, dwarf hunter. He's in every expansion. He's got his own little like trek out into the wilderness. Um, and there's a quest line to go and poop in his shoe. <gasps> <laughs> 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 oh, that is so petty. I love it. I do too. <laughs> to be fair, it's also kind of like uh like he's also killing Sorin. So yeah, it's kind of revenge and it's great. There's one more Loa I wanted to bring up before because we had mentioned him last time. All the way back in Wrath of the Lich King out on Northrend, we saw the threat of the scourge and what it meant for the frost trolls that lived on the continent. Um, and we saw them turn on their Loa, the Wind Serpent Theron Ja, uh, the patron of Drak Theron Keep, uh, and they sacrifice him in order to defend against the Lich King's forces. Which also doesn't work. <laughs> the, 
this is the point where like I just kind of start laughing because it's just ridiculous. The Prophet Thuranja was ultimately betrayed uh, by another troll by the name of Drakuru, who actually sided with the Lich King and used us as a means to take over the temple. Oh, shit. <laughs> Um, so let that be a lesson. Killing your Loa doesn't really do much to help you in the long run. Uh, and in pretty much every case, we've seen someone betray their Loa and taking their power. They get foiled by somebody else, uh, or something else, and it's usually adventurers. So it's usually players. And we do good work. Um, That'll learn them. Yeah. Uh, so that's by no means the extent of the list of Loa. There's so many more. Um, we talked a lot about Hakar last time, so I felt like, no, let's go. We don't need to talk to talk about him again. Um, but slight spoiler, he will be making an appearance in Shadowlands, um, as well as Buon Samdi. Uh, and then there's one that we can't talk about yet that will also be doing that, uh, that that'll also be showing up. That'll be interesting. Um. Yeah, and there's plenty. Yeah, and there's plenty of other Loa that uh, I just couldn't find a way to really tie them into this, since they're not really pertinent to what's coming up or what's like. Some of them are pertinent to what's happened, but it's just everything in the last little bit has been just specifically these kind of storylines. So, but there's so oh. many, and they're so cool. I think we got a we had a good overview there. That was a good mm -hmm. handful. Absolutely. There, there's a there's a lot. Uh, but that about does it for us today. Ooh. We would like to thank the Winnipeg Public Library. We usually record at the Millennium Library in their beautiful Idea Mill makerspace. But in taking everyone's health and safety seriously, we're working from home. Uh, our intro and outro music is by Kevin McLeod. And you can find all of his work on his website, incompetech.com. And our wonderful artwork is by our good friend, Ben Hoffer. His Instagram is scorpiosoka7. If you would like to check out more of his work, that's S-C-O-R-P-I-U-S-O-K-A, the number seven. And he's opening up commissions, so follow him for more inform information about that. Uh, and he also did all of my emotes and um, a couple little overlay bits uh, for my stream. So... And he's going to be doing more. I just have to figure out what I want him to do yet. <laughs> Very exciting. We'll have to check out Discord to see what those are. Oh, this will be on this will be on stream. But yeah, the emotes oh, are in Discord too, um, as well as on Twitch. So come Ooh. come hang out with mostly me. <laughs> 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 I know I know you don't use Discord a ton, but I also know that you have it on your phone, so you do see it occasionally. Um, exactly. I might pop in on the rare moments. And I've seen it happen. It does happen on occasion. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us today for Azeratha History. I'm Senpai. I'm Bam Bam. And we'll notice you next time. Bye!